everybody, this is Stacy with The Other Clinic and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about testosterone. If you're watching this video then you're either going to be seeking to get on testosterone or you're a nerd like me and you just want to know lots of stuff. At any rate, I'll try and keep it short but there's a lot to cover. I've got a little list up on the side of my screen so in case you see me glancing that's what I'm doing. Anyways, one of the first things to uh, know or be aware of before you get on testosterone is any fertility concerns that you have need to be addressed before then. You know, don't just hop on it and then think everything will be fine later. In all likelihood, it will. Newer studies that have come out have shown that people who transition on testosterone usually can come off of it later and several months after they've gotten off of it, their body resumes its normal cycles and things and they can either impregnate someone or get pregnant, whichever the case may be. You never know. <laughs> anyway, we all have different parts and everything and I will try and stay as like PC with the name of parts and stuff as I can in here, although I may have to name the anatomical things just to be clear whenever we get to a certain part about bottom growth and whatnot. So if you're interested in fertility at all, as in having like a biological child from your body, check that out before you go on hormone therapy, just in case there's already a pre-existing problem that could potentially be fixed, or, you know, just in case you want to bank eggs, bank sperm with your partner, whatever the case may be, just look into it beforehand. So moving on. With testosterone, usually the first changes you're going to see are going to involve the voice getting deeper. So you might see some cracking of the voice and uh, deepening of the voice over time. May, you may have a hard time singing for a while. Um, and this also happens in concert with bottom growth. Um, why is that connected? Haha, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> but anyways, so whenever your voice is changing, you're actually having a lengthening and thickening of the vocal cords. It can make you kind of... <laughs> feel like you got something caught in your throat, like some phlegm or something like that. Um, but anyways, it will be changing. Usually that can happen anywhere in the first three to six months and continue on for a couple of years. Uh, in regards to the bottom growth, specifically, uh, you do see some growth of pretty much all the tissues, but specifically it's going to be the clitoris and that can actually turn into a phallus. Uh, in many cases, most people do experience some form of growth down there and it can be anywhere from an inch to a couple of inches of growth. So you can get a, uh, a mini phallus going on and there you go. Save yourself some money on surgery. Grow your own. <laughs> anyway, so moving on, voice changes, bottom growth, they do happen. Um, you may experience and most likely will experience some changes in your actual monthly cycle. So testosterone most of the time on full dose therapy will suppress your cycle, but not always, not always. That's not a guarantee. As long as you have the parts, that stuff can still happen. And I have a separate video all about how that affects the uh, masculine menstrual cycle in case you want to look that up and see the specifics of it. But anyway, just be aware that it usually will stop your cycle within the first three to six months. It may be kind of a regular, uh, that's irregular, sorry, the way I said it sounds like a regular. Anyways, it may be a bit irregular uh, during the first couple of months or it may stop altogether. But as long as you have the parts, you do have the chance for breakthrough bleeding later. So just be aware of that. Um, anyways, so moving on on my list, we've got uh, hair to the body and face. So. The body hair is gonna increase in growth rate, more than likely, especially if it's in your genetics to be a hairy beast. Um, it can get longer and thicker and darker all across your body, and you may see that you start having hair on your thighs or something like that where you used to not. You may have hair down the butt crack where you used to not. Anyways, it's fun, body hair for everybody. Um, <clears throat> moving on, facial hair growth. That can happen starting in the first three to six months, but it's more common that this is gonna be a slower process because these hairs on your face, the baby hairs are called valus hairs and they have to actually fall out before the terminal hairs come in. And those are the thicker, coarser, darker hairs that are the actual like beard hairs and stuff. And full beard development, I mean, that can take actually like years, like five, seven years or so for full beard. I know some people get it earlier. It may just be in their genes. Again, hairy beast genes. It happens. Yay. Um, but 
you know, some people are going to take a little bit longer. You may experience some fuzz or, you know, you're going to have some patchiness. Over time, it eventually will fill in, but don't expect you're going to bust out and have a full face of hair in like a year. You'll probably just have some patches and stuff start growing in, and that's fine. That's normal. Um, moving on. So, musculature. You're going to, over time, generally experience an increase in your muscle mass of about 22 up to 30 percent that's pretty sweet you can maximize that if you're doing some kind of strength building workouts and stuff while you're on T I really highly advise that because my next topic is then uh, fat redistribution which is where the fat on your body actually redistributes itself into a pattern that is more masculine so rather than having it collect more on the thighs and hips area and chest it's going to be more flattened out along the torso and form along the abdomen um, so if you do work out during this time that you're first getting on tea, you will get better results than someone who is just sitting around expecting tea to do everything for them. Tea is a very active hormone, I'm here to tell you, and working out, whether it's cardio or muscle workouts, will help you in the end get the maximum effects even faster with your testosterone regimen, whether you're on non-binary or full dosing. Um, let's see, next would be mood swings. So some people are worried that testosterone is gonna make them an angry mess or whatever. It's not really that. If you're an angry person to begin with, you're still gonna be angry, whatever. Uh, this is a second puberty essentially, and so you can have mood swings and stuff, but they're not uncontrollable. Anybody who says they're on tea and they're having uncontrollable mood swings is giving themselves too much tea. Like how bodybuilders will like give themselves triple and quadruple the dose, and then they're like having a roid rage moment or whatever. That's that's not cool. Don't, don't do that. On regular doses or non-binary doses or whatever, you can have some mood swings and stuff, especially whenever you first get on it the first few weeks. But there's nothing uncontrollable about this. And even the people who are out there who have bipolar and stuff like that, usually we'll start them off at a slower and lower dose and kind of incrementally creep it up just to make sure they tolerate it okay. But it, it's perfectly fine as long as their, uh, their bipolar is controlled um, in whatever way, medication or therapy or whatnot. Whenever we start them on it, you can do just fine even with any kind of mental health issues and whatnot. Um, let's see, so a final word about testosterone, do be aware that it is a controlled substance, meaning that the federal government has deemed it to be something that has a potential for abuse. It's considered a Schedule 3 drug in the controlled substance uh, categories, uh, just to give you an idea. Stuff like Lortab, Norco, Percocet and stuff is a Schedule 2, uh, so uh, testosterone is a step down from that at a Schedule 3. Um, and so because of that, there are a lot of different laws and regulations about how much you can have at what time and how soon you can refill things. So you have to be very con considerate of whatever supply you're given. Please do not like just put it anywhere where the cat can pick it up and run off with it or whatever because this stuff can't be refilled early if you lose it or, you know, accidentally, I don't know, you pull it out of the vial and spray it somewhere or whatever. Um, you got to be very careful with it because um, pharmacies do monitor how much one person has been given very closely. Um, so anyway, just wanted to, you know, throw that out there as well so that you are aware of what happens with um, controlled substances in regards to testosterone. Um, anyway, so to recap, Voice and bottom growth are usually the first things you're going to see. Um, hair on the body and face uh, tends to come rather quickly on the body and somewhat slowly on the facial part. Um, muscle and fat changes will be greatly enhanced if you are working out even just a little bit whenever you're on this stuff for the first couple of years. Um, your cycle will be affected. Um, it will either be irregular or it will stop altogether. Um, you may have some mood swings, but they should not be uncontrollable. And if you have any fertility concerns, you really should take care of them before you get on hormones. Although, like I said, studies have shown promise that being on um, hormone therapy of any kind, testosterone or estrogen, uh, is now considered a little bit less of a risk of losing fertility permanently, but it has a lot to do with your baseline health, whatever other medical conditions you have, whatever other medicines you're on, what age you are, because obviously if you're on hormone therapy, you go on hormone therapy at age 40 and then you decide to have a kid whenever you're 60, you may not have as much of a chance of conception as if you had started, you know, if you had come off of hormone therapy in your 40s still or something like that. I mean, 
that would be true for cisgender people as well. And um, people that go on, you know, puberty blockers and hormones and stuff whenever they have just hit puberty, they may have issues as well just because they were put on this stuff before all of their parts had fully developed and, and whatnot. So they may have fertility issues, but we really don't know that much about it right now because there's not a lot of studies on people who were put on it that early and then who later came off of it to try to either get pregnant or impregnate someone. So anyway, take care of that beforehand if you can. Otherwise, I would advise someone, if you're wanting a biological child of your own, uh, within the first few, certainly within the first five years of hormone therapy would probably be the ideal time to try to uh, come off of it and either conceive in one way or another um, or, you know, maybe freeze sperm or eggs or what have you. Um, but anyway, so hopefully this was helpful and um, y'all have a fun day. Bye!